Hello and welcome to this video. This is all part of a series of videos we're doing covering the setup and the running of the NC4 laser tool setter. Today, we're gonna to be using the NC4 to measure the tool length, the radius, and the run out value. I welcome back Ian, who has all the technical knowledge and he knows his stuff pretty much when it comes to the NC4. So first of all, Ian, what is tool run out? So tool run out is where the spindle center line and the tool center line are offset. In the perfect scenario, they're in line, but if not, then run out is created. And typically there are two types of run out. First is where the tool is parallel with the spindle, but it's running out eccentrically. And the second is where the actual tool is angled and it's running around the spindle like this. So in both scenarios, that could be caused by a collet badly assembled, or maybe some dirt or debris inside the actual tool assembly. So is this kind of check important? Yes, if the tool has run out, then it won't be cutting efficiently or effectively. And depending on the severity of the run out, your surface finish could start to be poorer on your components. You could start to get increased tool wear, or in the worst case, the tool could even break. So what are the benefits then of checking for this run out value on a machine as opposed to offline on, for instance, say a presetter? Well, presetters can account for run out in the tool holder, but they can't really account for any run out created when you mount the tool into the spindle. So if there is any debris or dirt between the taper and the spindle, you can't account for that on a presetter. Or if the tool just didn't mount properly, that also cannot be detected on an offline system. Right, okay, so this run out cycle isn't part of our standard suite of cycles, which comes with all installations. Instead, it's part of our advanced package, which can be requested separately. But why is this? Well, our standard package covers the normal day-to-day -day tasks that customers undertake. The advanced package, the cycles are more bespoke, which means they're designed to overcome a specific issue that has been raised by a customer. So how does a cycle work? Well, in a previous video, we talked about the edge checking cycle, and this cycle is very similar. You can measure tool length, tool radius, or both length and radius. But by adding a C input, after the measurement is taken place, we perform another task. With the edge checking cycle, we were looking for missing inserts or chipped edges, but with this cycle, we're going to measure the tool runout. And I remember on a previous um, video when we did the edge checking cycle, if we added the B4 input, it would only do the edge checking only without any measurement. Is that the same here? Yeah, it's exactly the same. So B1 is length, enter B2, it's radius, enter B3, it's length and radius. If you enter B4, then it's run out measurement only. No length and radius measurement at all. Right. So we have two tools which we've set up in the machine today, and we want to measure the length, the radius, and the run-out value of both of them. The first tool is a small slot drill. It's half a millimeter diameter with two flutes, and the second is a 16 millimeter end mill with four flutes. Let's measure the first tool. Okay, so I prepared a program previously, and now we need to enter the cycle. First, I enter the program name, so I type G65P9869. Then I enter B3 because we want to measure both the length and the radius. We need to enter the tool diameter, so that is R0.5. The number of teeth, we have two teeth on this cutter today, so I enter C2. And the height at which you want the runout measurement to take place, but also the radius measurement. This is a very small tool, so I only want to measure one millimeter up from the bottom of the tool. And finally, the V inputs. So for this cycle, we need to use and store data in extra variables. And the 160 refers to hash 160. So we will store data in hash 160 onwards. The amount of data we store varies depending on the number of teeth. And if you refer to our programming guide, that will give you an exact number of how much data we are going to use. And do we need a tolerance value for the runouts? Yes, you can enter a tolerance value. The input is K, but if you don't enter it, the default is 25 microns. And I'm quite happy with 25 microns for this tool. So we can begin. Well, 
Okay, the cycle has finished. The tour length, the radius, and the runout has been measured. There's been no alarm, which tells us that the runout is less than the tolerance value, which was a default value, which you didn't enter a K, in this case, 25 microns. It also means that the tall offsets have been updated, which is what we wanted. Where can I see the um, runout value? The runout value is stored at the end of the cycle in hash 137. So on this tool, the runout value is 12 microns. Okay, so just two questions. Would the tool length and radius have been updated if the tolerance check had failed? No, the tool offset is only updated if the runout value is less than the tolerance. And the second question, or more of a confirmation really, can we measure the runout without measuring the tool first? Yes, if you substitute the B3 input with B4, the cycle will only do the runout measurement element. You just have to be a little bit careful with B4 because the cycle assumes that the tool length and radius in the tool offset are already correct. All right, so let's move on to our second tool, which is the 16 millimeter end mill. We do suspect there is some kind of run out on this tool, but we don't know how much. Will the inputs be sort of similar to the previous cycle? Yes, so we already had the cycle from the previous tool. So I've just edited that program and I've simply edited the tool number, the diameter, and the number of teeth. Okay, so let's press cycle start. And remember this time we're expecting to see an alarm because the runout will be excessive. Okay, so we have an out of tolerance alarm, which tells us that the runout is excessive. It's greater than our tolerance value, which is a default value, which is 25 microns. Yes, that's right. Okay, it's all well and good measuring the runout on tools with edges or flutes, but all about tools without edges or flutes, for instance, a grinding wheel. So for tools like grinding wheels, you simply have to edit the C input and enter C0, and the cycle will automatically adjust itself. And we actually have a grinding wheel in the carousel in tool 15. So we can try that if you want to. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so I'll modify the program and then we'll be ready to go. Okay, let's hit cycle start. Okay, thanks Ian. But one last thing before you go today. We've seen several alarms which mm -hmm. have stopped the machine dead. But are we able to suppress those alarms just like our other cycles by adding an M1 input? Yes, this cycle is the same as all our other cycles. If you add an M1 input to the cycle line, you will stop the alarm um, and you'll set hash 148 to a value. And then a programmer can look at the status of hash 148 and build some logic around it. Like for example, pick a sister tool. And we've got some examples of these in our programming guides. Okay, thanks Ian. So that's the end of our video on run out control. Remember to check out our other videos on the how to series. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. And remember, check those tools.